Hi. So thanks for your time both. Um, really excited about this because I know you have been working, uh, especially on gamification, last couple of months. Uh, and yeah, so just today I wanted to talk to you about your experience and all of those things. So to just kick things off, just want to understand more about your background, what you do at uh, Postman, all of those things. So we're both data analysts at Postman and our team just enables other squads and business units to make data driven decisions at Postman. Nice. And so like, have you both been here at the same time? So I joined two years back and I think Sai has been here for the last year. Correct, correct. I think I joined as an intern in uh, January of 2021 and I turned full time in June 2021. Nice. So, uh, yeah. And then how is like data important for Postman? Like general, if you want to talk about uh, how do you use data internally in the team? What teams you're part of? So from the very beginning, I think our leadership's vision has always been to make Postman a data driven organization. So any decisions that are taken at Postman are usually taken uh, after being backed up by data. So every squad, every team in Postman works with data and uh, uses data to uh, formulate any kind of strategy and any kind of plans that they have uh, for anything that they do. Okay. Cool. So uh, are you both part of same teams then? Yeah, uh, we do work with different squads, but uh, yes, we're part of the central data team. Awesome. So um, what problems are you trying to solve with Atlin? Before Atlin, we had um, an Excel sheet essentially where we used to track uh, our data assets and obviously um, nobody enjoyed going back to it, uh, nobody enjoyed updating it. So with Atlin, we got a lot of visibility into data assets. And for the first time, Atlin showed us that we could actually track much more metadata. Um, so we started tracking things like lineage and uh, deprecated assets, um, as well as enhancing our data dictionary. Um, Atlin's API also allowed us to pull that data elsewhere. So it, I mean, it, it really changed the way we looked at our metadata. When you mentioned like the problems that you were trying to solve, like for you personally, as you work as data analyst day to day, what are some of the challenges uh, that you face with data? And like, how do you think uh, Atlin helps you in your workflow? Basically, uh, when I had first joined as a newcomer into the data team, one issue that I faced was that uh, there were hundreds, hundreds of tables. And uh, for every table, I needed to ask somebody, OK, can you tell me what this column means? Can you tell me what information this table will give me? And it was kind of repetitive for every task that I had to do for every new table that I was using. I had to go through this exercise of asking somebody who's already been in Postman for some time about what information that data uh, that table will give me. So yeah. uh, one thing I like about Atlan is that uh, I can do this without actually asking for help. I can do this on my own. Uh, yeah, and also, I mean, in terms of um, when you're onboarding somebody to um, the data ecosystem, um, just telling them about Atlin instantly uh, makes it much easier for you as a mentor or a buddy because they're able to, you know, get a lot of information in a self-serve fashion. Mm -hmm. And I mean, obviously, we still do um, talk a lot with each other about um, yeah. what happens with data, but we're constantly trying to move all of that context to Atlin and keep it updated there. Okay, that makes sense. So then how did gamification uh, come into picture? What point did you start thinking about it? Uh, so like I mentioned, uh, when I first joined, I was having a lot of trouble with all these tables. And uh, we knew how to solve the problem. The solution was just, you know, keep Atlan updated and make sure that Atlan has all the information anybody who just who is new to the team needs. But uh, it's kind of a cumbersome task to just ask your team members to fill in information for all the tables. It's very difficult to have that as, you know, a ticket on the Jira board, you know, fill yeah. tables on Atlin, right? But instead of that, we realized that if we can gamify the process a little bit, if we can make it fun for everyone, you know, kind of like a competition for the team, uh, yeah. it'll be a lot easier for people to fill in the data and we can get it done quicker. And interestingly, um, Sai suggested the idea to me at the same time that um, yeah. Nandini, you had put out that uh, post about gamification. So, so the yeah, the blog yeah. about gamification. So, I mean, it was fantastic because then we could instantly <laughs> set up the collaboration yeah. for doing it. Yeah, that was good timing, definitely. 
Correct. So, uh, like, what what did you want to achieve uh, through gamification, like overall, and like, where do you think it fit in your overall data enablement strategy? Because uh, I know you've mentioned in the past as well that you are a central data team and that you are enabling other uh, teams, other squads in turn. So, I uh, would love to know more about how did you think gamification or this objective that you are trying to achieve through it uh, would have helped uh, broader teams. Okay. So. Uh... Through this gamification, uh, our main uh, objective was just to make sure the metadata for our most important tables is completely filled on Atlin. So uh, we realized that adoption of Atlin and uh, metrics on it, the coverage of metrics is a little bit low. So we wanted to make sure these are filled up through a fun exercise. And again, I think I mentioned the point about uh, newcomers having to go to people and ask a lot of questions and we kind of just wanted to give them the independence of learning about tables on their own. Yeah. You mentioned coverage of metrics, like uh, I think talk a bit more about that, like what does it actually mean uh, as a problem statement? If we look at our data stack, we have a lot of data coming in from different parts of the organization and on top of that, as the data team, we then uh, make sense of it and uh, give business context to it. and. Add, I mean, add a metrics layer on top of that data. So it was a little bit difficult to have coverage of even the metrics layer that we had set up, which meant that I think when we started, what was it? We had like 10% of our most important tables, yeah. most important metrics that uh, people had documented, which was quite poor. Um, and this was excluding all of the other assets that had been created, were deprecated, were not used. So there, there was just, um, very low visibility into what was happening with our own data that we had created. Oh yeah, yeah. So uh, I was just asking then, how did you go about planning for this gamification? Because uh, I remember from like earlier calls, I've always seen you two as like a power squad. So would love to know uh, like what was your uh, planning strategy there? Right. So uh, I think when I came to Prashasti with the idea, my idea was just, please, let's have data for all the tables, <laughs> that's it. But uh, I think Prashasti was the one who kind of guided me there, uh, saying that we can't go for all the tables. We can't expect 100% coverage for every single table that exists, mm -hmm. right? But uh, we decided that we needed to pick out, you know, a top 100 or top 200 most important tables. So, yes. but what's most important, right? Uh, we realized that uh, the tables that we used on Looker for our Looker dashboards, we realized that these are the tables that are most often used on Looker as well as queried on uh, in an ad hoc fashion on SQL, right? So we figured that these are the tables that would need their metadata filled the most. And we went ahead with, I think, 170 or 180 of I those, so. if I'm not wrong. Yeah. So did you like do any validation exercise to check that these were indeed the most used table or was it like uh, from the context you had from the leadership team, from your own team? I mean, I'd been a part of the organization for some time then. So I knew that, um, you know, Looker was the place that we started um, analysis and Looker was also the place where we used to expose the data to all of our end consumers. So whether it was top leadership teams or the different squads, Looker is where they were consuming the data, which meant that um, our metrics layer, while it was built in DBT, it r was exposed on Looker. And therefore, um, we didn't need to do a validation exercise. I think we were able to understand uh, that this is what we needed to do. The thing is that we hadn't maintained our tables, but we were maintaining our Looker repositories because end consumers were involved there. Correct. And then like uh, what other elements were part of your overall like planning strategy? One was you mentioned uh, prioritizing the right tables. Um, what else? Uh, another important thing I think was just devising a scoring strategy. So there's a lot of metadata to be filled for each table, right? There's a summary, there's column descriptions, there's an indicator of whether or not the table is still active or if it's deprecated. So there's a lot of different things here and uh, some things are more important than others. So we had to devise a proper scoring strategy for uh, ensuring that the most important things. So for us, I think it was an indicator of whether or not the table is still active yeah. the, and the table summary mainly. We needed to make sure that these two are definitely filled for all of our most important tables. 
So our scoring strategy was formulated to kind of reflect that. And I think you also played a big hand in helping us through our scoring strategy. Ask me, it was quite fun, I remember. <laughs> like, uh, okay then, how did you decide um, how long should you go on like with the gamification for? Like, So uh, I think it can be a challenging thing to think like how long do we want to go on with it? So yeah, I would love to know more about that. Yeah, so uh, we did the exercise. I mean, I think initially we were thinking of doing the exercise for two weeks with one review week. Mm -hmm. um, and then we went on to maybe let's do it for three weeks. But then finally we understood that uh, we had to manage the number of tables that we had given out with the number of weeks. And if we'd spent too long on it, people would lose interest. Yeah. Uh, so I think we settled on ultimately three weeks. Um, total three weeks. I total think. three weeks involving um, some review by the other team to cut down the other team's points. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing like some healthy competition. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> Awesome. So um, overall, like, how did Atlin help you during this time? Um, I think uh, initially when uh, we were thinking of doing the gamification, we still went back to our old construct of let's fill out the table descriptions and the column descriptions. But I think looking at the availability of different fields on Atlin um, and its easy integration with DBT, uh, we were able to pre-fill some of the essential metadata fields um, and then we were able to ask people to fill in some of the other fields and I think that ultimately has helped us um, have a much more well curated data store. Uh, and from like support perspective, uh, how have you, how, how, how has your experience been? Uh, I think Nandini, you've been the most helpful out of everyone in Adlin. Uh, you've actually... <laughs> I mean, I, I think for every step that we took in this gamification drive, you've always been with us, you've always given us, uh, you've always reviewed our work, you've always, you know, given us some revisions in, let's say, scoring strategy, gifts, uh, in general, whatever strategy we were thinking of for, you know, implementing this gamification drive. I think you've sent us a bunch of case studies as well, you know. Uh, I think you sent a few docs on how other organizations implemented gamification drives in their organization. And I think those also helped us, I think, alter our drive. For quite sure. A bit. I think uh, you made the gamification go from a process which we kind of tend to <laughs> lean into, and you made it mu much more of a fun exercise. So yeah. Obviously, the memes and stickers are very helpful. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> that was all you, though. <laughs> I had no role to play in memes, but yeah, in general, I love memes. So, I mean, talking about memes, like, how did you uh, incentivize the team? Like, how did you keep, uh, like, everyone excited? And by the way, like, thanks a lot for that. Uh, I mean, it was me, I know, on the forefront, but we always had the Atlan team in the background uh, helping too. So, yeah, thanks from all of us. <laughs> um, so, what we did was, uh, we have some exciting Postman goodies that everybody I um, really wanted to get when we announced it. What were they? So I think it was uh, socks and yeah. a laptop sticker, uh, mugs. Bobblehead. I think the bobblehead was the main thing that everyone yeah. wanted. Because I think some of the older Postman employees always had their workplace set up with that bobblehead on the left, uh, to the left of their laptop. And I think a lot of us were jealous of that. I know I was. <laughs> That was actually uh, quite innovative of you to think of something that also relates back to being in the office environment and bring that connection in. So yeah, I think that that was uh, a lot of fun stuff that you picked up for uh, games. And then how did you keep the team, uh, team in general like excited about this? Because uh, when you do these things, you have to bring everyone together. So we'd we'll love to know more about that. Right. So I think throughout the whole gamification drive, we had created a tracker on Excel so that teams could track their progress. And we made sure that each team could see the other team's progress as well. So they could, you know, healthy competition, like you mentioned. Uh, I think this was updated daily or uh, every two days, yeah, something like yeah. that. So they could see the percentage coverage of whatever tables they had been assigned, each team had been assigned. Yeah. Uh, apart from that, I think we also gave weekly shout outs to uh, 
teams as well as individuals who were star performers so to speak so yeah. uh, we have a slack channel which also has our cto in it mm -hmm. and it has a bunch of people from data science as well as data engineering yeah and yeah. we used to give shout outs on that group to kind of incentivize and uh, motivate people to actually go and fill their metadata nice yeah uh, so uh, like you mentioned like you created this group so uh, what was the response like from the team to uh, things that you were doing uh, for like incentivizing them like mean shout outs could you see uh, any of them like making a difference uh, in the overall uh, gamification yeah so i think um, the first day that uh, we started this we saw a couple of people instantly start to fill up uh the tables i mean we divided the teams so the leaders actually brainstormed with their teams on who would take up what tables what strategies they would use it really turned into a, a an all out war against each other <laughs> so um when people started filling up uh, tables we'd also i mean slack has an integration with atlin so we'd set up this challenge called uh, channel called atlin updates um mm -hmm. so at any time that somebody would go to atlin fill out uh couple of tables or a couple of columns um sai and i would you know uh say that you know this team is now going to win and yeah, yeah. you can see how well they're doing and then other people started talking about oh my god this person's uh going ahead and doing so much so yeah that was really exciting um to see people just filling it up something that was really interesting that happened was and i know this because i participated in one of the teams yeah. uh yeah. was that one of our team members uh, uh i mean we thought as team a that we were leading Uh, yeah. until the last day and then when the results were announced by sai it turned out that the other team had won um oh. and we realized this was because 2 hours before the deadline somebody had filled out everything uh elsewhere and then they put all of it into atlin so it was quite a backdoor <laughs> win <laughs> we thought because we couldn't see uh yeah. what coverage they had versus what coverage they had in the end but it was uh, it, it, i mean it was really interesting i think uh, we were wondering whether uh the incentive would be enough but honestly everybody really got into the spirit yeah. and had a good time i think after a point it wasn't the goodies and it wasn't the incentives that we had put into place i think it was just uh we had picked out team leaders so there was a leader yeah. for team a and there was a leader for team b and the yeah. leaders had devised their team strategy so to speak and i think it was just their egos driving them at yes. some point <laughs> my strategy is the best i need to win <laughs> Awesome. Would love to also uh, know like what kind of memes you created. What fun you had during that. Oh yeah, I remember the doc that we had created. The guidelines doc was just filled with Michael Scott. It was <laughs> I think fifty percent of the doc was just Michael Scott gifs. <laughs> uh, awesome. Like how did you put together the doc? Was it like what did that doc have uh, in general? What kind of guidelines were there? right so i think the document had everything from the scoring strategy to what people would win um the problems that we were facing how we aim to go through them because i mean while it was a competition we also wanted everybody to know the the broader purpose behind it um so it had everything from the why's to the hows um and the how to win and the how you might end up losing <laughs> so yeah it it was really yeah. comprehensive and i think sai and uh, with nandini's input so uh, she did a fantastic job and i remember nandini you had you know complimented her on the <laughs> thoroughness of the document and i think that really helped um, ultimately because there was a lot of clarity on what to, was to be done awesome like and where did the doc live uh so most of our docs live on confluence we yeah. that's where we put up any kind of documentation be it a uh, root cause analysis for a bug or a design document for some analysis or guidelines for a competition okay and it really also linked it back to like stack channels or or your popular groups uh i think we had sent out a message when we initially announced the competition i think we had sent out a link to the document but generally any time we put up something on confluence in that space the whole team gets sent an email so anybody who was involved in the competition was sent an email when the doc was created okay awesome great 
Uh, and then uh, what were some of the key success outcomes uh, of this gamification drive? Yeah. So we had, um, in terms of the immediate success, we saw the coverage go up from 10% to I think it was almost 50, 60%. I think more than that. More than, that, more than yeah. that, yeah. yeah. So I think the coverage went up immensely, which was fantastic to see. Um, but even in the long term, and we still see this now, uh, we have reviewers and uh, reporters and even the assignees of particular tasks, you know, Atlan's always at the back of their minds. And they're constantly trying to update and improve the information store on Atlan. And I think that's because now they know that Atlan is a source which, um, you know, can be maintained, needs to be maintained, and they take ownership in maintaining it. So that's fantastic. We've also seen uh, generally that now newcomers will go to Atlan before they ping somebody on Slack to ask for context. So in terms of uh, data democratization and you know, owning metadata, we've seen a lot of change in the behaviors. Awesome. Uh, and then uh, you've mentioned in the past that you do uh, these uh, general like uh, sessions in the team with the wider team, almost spotlight sessions. So uh, do you want to talk about that a bit more overall for data culture, like Friday demos, was it? Demo day is basically a fortnightly meeting at Postman where different teams and different squads demo some of the most important work that they've done. And uh, one way that we decided that uh, Postman could get to know about this gamification drive and ultimately also get to know about Atlin was through this demo day. So I think we had demo, put together a five minute demo of how we did the drive, why we did the drive and what, what we achieved through the drive. Got it. Awesome. And like, uh, what was the leadership uh, buy-in like during uh, this entire process? So we had our manager uh, and he was extremely on board with it. He gave us a lot of autonomy, but was also there anytime we needed some feedback or suggestions from him. Um, also, I mean, with the leadership team, like the C CTO being part of the channels where this was going on, um, you know, he was looped into what was happening. Uh, initially, when we proposed the idea in one of our internal yeah. meetings, um, he got quite excited about it. and. Um, you know, he gave us the go ahead for, you know, go carrying ahead. it out. Yeah. <laughs> so, I mean, that was great. It was just everybody was really encouraging, uh, whether it was the participants or the leadership. What would be your advice to other data leaders who want to launch a gamification like this in their org? Right. So I think first and foremost is basically just making sure your team understands why you're doing this. Your team should be completely on board with what you're trying to accomplish through this. I think that, luckily in our case, our team was very happy with whatever we were trying to accomplish through this gamification drive. Yeah, I mean, they already faced the problem, so <laughs> they instantly related. Yeah, yeah. Uh, apart from that, uh, I think another thing to keep in mind is not to overwhelm the team. So I think my initial idea was just, let's fill everything in Atlas. Let's make sure every single table is filled, <laughs> which is, not possible. It's not practical and it's not possible. And I think because of Prashasti, we did cut that down to a very feasible number. I mean, it's good to just focus on the most important aspects of whatever you're working with. Yeah, and important can, I mean, be different from um, organization to organization. So that's up to you to decide uh, whether it's most used tables or whether it's tables that contain your metrics layer. Mm -hmm. uh, that's up to you to decide. Okay, that makes sense. And anything, uh, any advice for you? for to fo folks who actually organize it within the teams as well, like within the core organizing team, like uh, you both, from like mm -hmm. implementation uh, point of view, for example, uh, the docs, the document that you had put together, like how much time does it take? How should one go about uh, thinking about it? Right. I mean, I think uh, it helped that there were two of us because we Definitely. were able to bounce ideas off of each other and with uh, you, Nandini. So that was one. Uh, second is we obviously got buy-in from the leadership, so that's important. Just keep the communication very clear. The third was uh, I think it took us about two weeks to plan, two two and a half and weeks. And yes, yeah, maybe. because we also had to um, collect data about which were the most used um, assets, which meant that we had to run some. Um, API calls, generate some collections to get all of that data, coverage metrics and things like that. So yeah, setting that up takes a little bit of uh, effort, uh, but it's totally worth it, I think. Yeah. For us, I think uh, because 
we were a little familiar with postman it was a little quicker yeah. the making of the tracker was a little quicker although i can't lie i took help of a software engineer friend <laughs> he he helped me set up the tracker it wasn't just me vasa <laughs> but uh, yeah sorry you can cut that part out don't tell my manager <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> So yeah, I think that's also a very important point like just like leaning into uh, your other team members like who can also help so I think that makes sense because uh, typically in data teams as well one person you can't have all the context like you you work as a team so yeah I think that that totally makes sense awesome um I have one question that is not uh, on here on the doc so what's one message you would have for our Atlin team who would uh, watch this uh, video I mean a huge thanks to the Atlin team uh because we've seen time and again um you know how responsive how kind thoughtful um uh, you are and how much you really care about this problem statement of metadata uh we've seen a lot of other people try to approach this problem but uh just putting the customer first um has really um helped this relationship has helped our evolution with metadata so i mean just a huge thanks and a huge shout out to all of you do you have anything thank else you. to add to that i think you, have, <laughs> you covered it so i was going plus one plus one <laughs> awesome thank you um and like just uh, a fun section to end this uh, i want to do like a rapid fire round this is like a fun thing right so we'll do some non data stuff first like right? okay. so um, awesome So this is warm up round um texting or talking texting <laughs> okay okay cake or pie pie apple pie i've never had pie <laughs> <laughs> okay big dogs or small dogs big dogs cats <laughs> oh no okay i'll have to edit this part out oh no it's not a fair reaction I'm of the opinion that the bigger the dog is the smaller he is on the inside. Yeah. Okay, I like big dogs, but okay, invisibility or super strength? Invisibility. Super strength. Yaar. I don't know, invisibility feels a bit creepy, no? Yeah. <laughs> no, but all the sometimes in awkward social situations, exactly. invisibility you can just go. <laughs> just disappear. <laughs> Super strength you can build. Yeah, you can't build invisible. That's true. That's true. Okay, uh, dark chocolate or milk chocolate? Milk chocolate. Milk chocolate. Yeah. I think we agree. This is the first <laughs> answer we agree on. Okay. Now data rapid fire. Uh, data warehouse or data lakes? Data warehouse. We don't have a data lake yet. Yeah. Uh, Scrum or Kanban? Kanban. I've only used Kanban, so Kanban. Yeah. <laughs> okay, Python or R? Python. Again, I only know Python, so Python. <laughs> <laughs> dashboards or reports? Dashboards. Dashboards. Just reports has a has an has a weird connotation for us because it means that it's operational. <sighs> so dashboards. So, reports gives me a very uh, non-visual for sure. image in my head. It's just yeah. a word doc for me in my head. But dashboards are colorful and interactive sometimes. So dashboards. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Excel or Google Sheets? Google Sheets. Google Sheets. Yeah. Okay. Do you work from home or office? Oh. Work from office sometimes. <laughs> yeah. It depends on uh, what time I wake up at. Yep. <laughs> awesome. Well, thank you so much. Um, that was all. I uh, really, really appreciate you taking the time to talk through this. Uh, this will be super helpful for the wider Ashland community as well. So yeah, thanks a lot. Thank you so much. This was really fun. Oh. It was great talking to you. Awesome, thanks.